you going to do the you want to do the PowerPoint? We got anything in the PowerPoint or? No. All right. Well, I'll just tell them what's happening then. Go for it. It's over to you, Greg. Ready to go? Yep. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us at Thrive for our webinar on MYOB Acumatica construction. Yep, that's right. Um, I'm just going to talk about that before we start. So MYB Advanced is now MYB Acumatica, uh, which is a, a name change. You may or may not heard about it. Um, if you don't know who Acumatica are, um, they are MYB in the US and they've been around for many years. Um, and basically MYB take their product and Australianize it and sell it in the market here. So from now going forward, it will be called MOB Acumatica. Second thing about this product I'm going to show you today is um, if you're familiar with MOB account right, and we may have a number of people who have that product or have used that product, it's a completely different product. It's next level product. So we're going to be looking at the construction module today. Um, and the construction module um, is not an add-on to MIB account, but it is part of a next level product. I hope that I hope that explains everything. Okay, so let's get into it. So hopefully you can all see my screen here. This is my home screen that I go into when I log into MIB Acumatica Construction. And this is the construction edition we're going to talk about today. Um, I have a single login here. I basically go to a URL. I log in here as me with my email address and it brings me into this screen here. Um, I am logged into my company here. I could log into multiple companies um, or the ones that I choose. Um, and that's a significant difference from, again, from account right. Um, that I have multiple companies there. I can also run um, any number of instant, uh, instances I like from here too. So I'm going to spend about 40 minutes going through the product today. I want to spend um, just a little bit of time, five to 10 minutes, just to talk about um, general uh, navigation in MIB MYB Acumatica um, and show you a few of the features that are not construction and then we'll go and spend some time on the construction module. In this landing page here that I've got in this dashboard here, I can click straight into a project. Anything in blue here, I can stick into a project. So these dashboards come, um, there's a whole lot of them come out of the box, but you can create your own. So any of, any of these, um, dashboards here. Here are some nice pie charts I've got. I've got some nice little reports in here that I can drill down into. This is a nice one. Gives us the profit on a project. Um, this one gives the contract status on a project and so on and so forth. So these are tailorable to the individual users. You've also got down the left hand side a whole lot of modules here. So just want to go and talk about a few of them. So you've basically got your accounting modules on here. You've got your finance module, which is your general ledger. Um, you've got your banking. Um, you have your payables module, your receivables module. You also have sales order entry module. Um, you have a purchasing module. You have a very strong inventory module. And then there's more modules down here as well. So a fixed assets module. This is fully multi-currency, this product, um, which works with the inventory. So you can order from somewhere else in the world and bring it in and it'll do all the nice, the nice foreign currency transactions for you. Um, also has a full manufacturing suite in here. You know, that'll do a bill of materials and configure the product and do MRP work. Also a service management product for those of you that you might um, send 
make goods and send them out in the field and then you have to service them. An equipment management product, um, if you have a lot of equipment, you want to use it. Um, payroll, of course, which comes, um, which you, you may use now, the MYB payroll, um, and, and other things in, in here as well. It also has a full CRM module, um, which is pretty cool. And that works with uh, the construction module as well. So you can actually put in your opportunities that come or your tenders and you can drop all the documents in there and um, everything that you do on that tender. And if you win the project, you can convert it into a project and it will bring but the audit trail, um, all the documentation and everything over into the project, which is great. So if you're a multifaceted business, if you have different different um, things that you do in your business, um, again, you might be a construction company and then you do service or you might keep inventory, all of those things. It's a very full featured product. Um, we just sold. Uh, it might be advanced to a company who is a distributor and a manufacturer. And really, there's not much around in the market um, that would do what they needed to do. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's great like that. Um, so just going through modules and giving you a look at what they look like. If I go into payables, for example, um, basically, there are four areas in all these modules and they're all very consistent. So I have a transactions area, that's where I enter data. I have a profiles area where I set things up, like supplies and terms and so on. I have a processes area and in the processes area, um, I can I can set up um, workflows and imports, etc. that'll do a number of things once I click the button. Then I've got my inquiry areas and I've got my reports areas. So all the modules pretty much set up the same as I go through. Anything that I do a lot of the time, I can make a favorite. So you see this little star next to the next to the checks and payments there. Um, I create the favorite, the favorite, and it'll go and sit in the fav in the favorites box there. So I don't have to go down the modules and find everything again. A um, couple of other things that are really nice about navigation is um, if I wanted to go and find something or go somewhere quickly, um, I could just go and type something in the box, like companies, if I wanted to go to companies, I wanted to show you that, that next, so that works well. I can go in there, it'll take me straight there. So, Again, one of the significant differences here is I could have as many companies as, or almost as many companies as I like in here and as many branches. And within these companies that I go straight there, I can have different uh, different ways I set them up, different GL account numbers uh, and so on and so forth. And you'll see when I get to jobs, I can tag a, um, a, a particular project with a company or a department. And we also have multiple branches as well. That I can that I can set up. So again, I'm going to go back to my favourite screen, and I have all these things here. The other nice thing about this navigation is, if any time I want to go back to home base, I just click this um, MYB screen, and I go back there. A couple of other things that are pretty good too is the help menu. You can get the help menu from anywhere, um, and it'll bring up lists of topics, training materials. There's there's some videos in there as well, but it's very, very good. So you can learn a lot about it just by, you know, just by hitting the help menu and going through and looking at particular things. Okay, um, I'm going to spend a fair bit of time in the construction module and go through, and that's why you're here today. Um, if you, if when I go through there, if if you'd like to ask some questions, can you just save it to the end and we'll go through questions? Yeah, and that would that would be great. Okay, I'm going to go into this project here, which I can do straight from the dashboard. I've chosen this project, it's it's a house. Um, I've chosen it because most people understand it. 
and it's it's pretty straightforward but it has all of the all of the various things in there we need to have a look at so the first place I land is the summary screen so the summary screen basically sets up how I'm going to how I'm going to run this job from a a, a financial perspective so a lot of a lot of the stuff uh, is the same every time a um, couple of things that will change though are the billing type for example so I'm going to click in here so one of the really nice things about this product is it does all sorts of different types of billing this one's set up as a progress bill but I could also do cost plus billing I could do time and materials billing I could also do work in progress billing so it's very very flexible in terms of how you want to run any particular project um, the other thing which will change is the retention so this is the this is the basic retention module set up here um, you can change it to uh, a couple of different ways that you can do it and away we go so that's my that's my summary screen while I'm here before I go through these other tabs I want to tell you about a, a fantastic feature that this product has too it has this concept of project templates so if I click on this button here this will show me the different project templates I have so I can set up a template for all different types of work um, with different rules that apply to the different types of projects so I could have um, a housing project I could have a commercial project um, I could have you know different ways that I build things like have a cost plus project etc etc so the really cool thing about that is I can populate this template and put all the basic stuff that I use every time like the tasks and the revenue budget etc 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 and how I want to bill it and when I set up a new project I just simply go into the template bring the template in there and it'll populate everything that's standard in there and as you can imagine that just saves you so much time um, and it's a really fantastic feature okay so we've had a look at the summary screen so when we go into a project we need we need to put in tasks so you can have either a cost task a revenue task or a cost and revenue task and that's pretty cool because if you if you are working on a BOQ or you're working on the, um, the same revenue tasks as cost codes it'll record both of them as you go along the line in all of these areas you see these columns here so we have a grid set up in here I can simply click on this little icon here and I can add or remove columns excuse me in choose what I want um, which is pretty cool and that will change what this looks like across this grid so if you don't want a column you can just remove it if you want to add a column you can remove you can add it then we have the revenue budget and this is how I'm going to build a client here so I basically basically put in my different um, billing items in here and you see, you see this is like a house setup so I've got a deposit and a slab and a lock up and a fix out again I've also got a couple of variations in here too that I have that I've made and I've approved and therefore they sit in in here um, one of the really really nice things about this product here as well is this Excel integration so if I get the type of layout I like here I simply have to send that over to Excel populate the Excel file with anything I want to and I can import it straight back in by loading the records from the file now a lot of people may use Excel for estimating for example and they might do their estimates in Excel and also do their contract in Excel which is extracted um, from the budget so if you if that's the way you work you can simply you know import the import the um, 
cost budget in here and import the revenue budget in here and away you go. Um, and if you do something similar every time, it just works a treat. It's, it's really, really neat. Okay. So we get the revenue budget in there, then we get the cost budget in there. So you, you'll see here that um, I've got project tasks and cost codes associated with that. You can have a standard set of cost codes if you like, if you do the same thing every time. And all of these grids that we are looking at here, as I work and I do my transactions through here, um, these numbers will fill in. So um, various things that I have in here, so you know they, they will fill as I go. So for the scaffolding there, for example, um, I have a budget, uh, and I'll spend way over my budget on this <laughs> and I've got an actual amount and, and so on. So these will continue to fill as, as you place commitments, as you put um, accounts payable invoices in there, you put purchase orders in there and so on. The next tab, oh, actually one other thing. So if you're not importing or you just want to enter in there, you just simply click this plus sign and you add rows and you go along. When we start up a project, we should get balances. So this is a, a really nice little profit and loss on the job, if you like. So uh, the revenue is our total revenue budget that's in here. Um, the budgeted budgeted amounts our total our total expenses that we have in here to start with. So that's what we should we should get when we originally put in the cost budget and the revenue budget. And again, you can see these totals in here. I've got um, change orders um, that have come through here. It'll revise the budget amount. I've got committed amounts. I've got uh, over here, I've got actual amounts. So again, this will update every time that I put a transaction in here. The other little nice thing in here is you have up the top here, a little file section. So in the file section, we can put any sort of any sort of things we want. We can have plans for in there. We can have PDFs. We can have you know, whatever we want, and that'll click straight to our. This will click straight into um, our project. We just upload those from a file anywhere we want. The other couple of things I'll show you here is um, in this little dot menu here, this is this is filled with actions and things that we can do. So um, depending on what screen I'm in, um, it'll have different options in here if I want to. Um, so, you know, it wants me to run, run the project billing, that's what it's suggested. I could lock the commitments, I can lock the budget, which is a really nice feature to have. So you don't want the budget moving, the original budget, or you may may not want that moving. So um, again, if you've got the right security, you can lock that down so it stays where it should stay. So while I'm talking about um, the project billing, we basically, to do the project billing, we basically come in and tell it that something is 100% complete. It's not the only way to do it. And then we basically run the project billing and it will go through and it will find any line here, which is, uh, which meets the cr criteria of how it wants to build and it'll, it'll produce a progress claim for us. Okay, moving right along. So let's talk about commitments and purchase orders. So commitments are subcontracts and purchase orders. So this works very nicely. So we've got um, a subcontract here. I think we've lost you, Greg. We can't hear you.
Can anybody else hear Greg? No. no I can't, okay. can't hear him. Thanks, guys. I'm not sure what's happened to his audio. Sorry. I've just got him on the phone and told him. Hang okay. on. Thanks so much, Sarah. Apologies, everybody. Sorry. No problems. Thanks, Greg. Apparently, I just lost my sound. Yeah, you did. I it wasn't. The screens. Okay. The screens. I am screen. so sorry about that. All good. Um, okay. Quite sure. So, not quite sure where the sound went out, but I just showed a subcontract and, and now I'm showing a purchase order. And what I was saying is when you put your purchase orders in, you can use inventory line items in here as well, if you have inventory. Um, and that's, there's not a lot of construction products that come with inventory models, modules, but that makes it pretty cool. You can enter a PO receipt in here against the lines in the order. Um, and then you can enter an invoice too, if you want to. So that works really nicely. Okay, another thing that's nice is um, in the sub in the uh, subcontract here as well is you can when you enter the subcontract just show you a couple of things if you need to do this. Um, so here's a an electrical subcontract. So I can enter the three lines in here. This will show also when I receive the invoice and you can enter the amount in here that you want to pay. So if I was to go to the AP bill for this, payables, I can just search it, which is nice. And you'll see that subcontracts come up. Um, I can put what I want to spend in there, um, how much I want to on this particular bill. Um, I can release it. I can do a security payments out of here as well. So again, big difference between MYOB account right and this product is the construction module is fully integrated into all of the all of the modules, including accounts receivable, accounts payable, and so on. We'll also notice that I can have multiple windows open here too at the same time, which is pretty cool. So I can leave that open. So if you're uh, someone who works in accounts in the office, I can have the bills and adjustments one open. I could also have the construction one open, um, you know, whenever I like. And you'll see them come up in the bottom here as well. So I could, I could go straight back to my subcontracts. Um, talk about that in a sec. So complete functionality, very full functionality you have with subcontracts and purchase orders. And it'll do a round trip with your accounts as well. So then we have change orders. Should just go in here. Change orders or variations as you want to call them. So, so we can have all different types of change orders. We could have a client change order where we're going to bill the client and have a cost associated with it. Let's have a look at this one. So in this situation here, um, I'm going to bill the client $5,000, which is my revenue budget. And I have a cost budget here. It's going to cost me $2,500 through a subcontract to give him that. I have different statuses on um, the change orders. I can also put commitments in here against the change order as well. So I could have a revenue budget and I could have a commitment or I could have 
um, a commitment change order, a subcontract change order as well. The other thing in all of these, I can have approvals areas as well. So if I put a, if I have to get a subcontract approved or a contract approved or anything like that, I can set up an approval link chain that'll go all the way through. So that one there is a client vary. I can also do an internal one. So this one, this one doesn't have a revenue budget, but it has a cost budget. So I think I'm going to go $2,000 over in excavation. So I just want to, I want to flag that fact and I want it to update, update the cost code and the project. So that's all I need to do. And again, with all of these, um, I've got various options as I go in there. Um, I can go and, you know, click on the box and I can email it out. I can print it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and other things that I can do like reverse. We also have the concept of a change request. Now, some people, some people um, use change request, which is the same as a variation request. Um, and other people go straight to a variation. But um, I could do the same thing with, with a change request. Um, I can also, in a change request as well, have things like markups as well against it. So I can put a markup again against it. See if the other one's. I can put a markup um, of a percentage against this um, and then sell it to the client if I want to do it. And then once the once the change request gets approved, it turns into a change order or variation and it'll go onto the revenue budget for billing. Okay. So just going back to, just going back to um, the main menus within the job, that pretty much covers, um, pretty much covers all the functionality in there. Um, there's other things we can do. We could actually do some things with payroll as well if we want to do. We could set up some various rates for the job as well. Um, and you'll see uh, when we go to the next section, I can add equipment and I can add other things as well. Um, so yeah, that's basically the setup. Um, very functional and very, very good in cost control. Okay. So there are, when you buy the construction module, there are two other things that you get. You get the project management module and you get the compliance module. So let's talk about the project, project management module. So this is, you know, what I would call medium project management. Um, it's not real heavy project management you might get with other products. Um, like a Procore maybe, um, or an IPM, um, but it's it's quite functional and it may it may well suit you and it may well have enough functionality in there uh, for you to run the business. So we have um, RFIs. Again, with an RFI is um, you know what's going on with a particular a particular. Uh, Question that we have, and this will do all of all of the normal things. So it'll create the number. Um, you be able to send it out to um, the various people to ask the question to get the question answered. You know whether it's answered or not. You can, if it has dollars attributed to it, you can convert it to a change request, and then from a change request into a variation. You can email it out to people. Um, It'll keep a track of it. It'll also go on in what's called the ball and court. One of the things that's really good is the daily fill report. Some people call them site diaries, but there is, this is very good. Just remember that because this is a web-based product, um, this will run on any device that's got the web. So this, this, um, daily field diary works particularly well on tablets if you want to use a tablet. Um, so let's have a look at some of these. So basically what I have here is I have all the information about the job or the project uh, from on site. 
So, you know, who was working on there? So Sydney was working on this job for this day. She spent 10 hours on the job. This is the Costco that she spent it against. I have the weather. Um, I have any progress that's been made on the job. I can do a change request or a change order on the job. I can list the subcontractors who worked on the job. American Asphalt were out there and this is what they do at the time. I have a photo log so I can upload any photos I want there. Excuse me, and that'll keep an accurate record for each day as I go along. And you can also, with the time as well, you can post this time back into the project from the daily field report. So very good to have it. You can print it out, you can save it, you can complete it. Various other things you can do with it, but it's very strong. Um, and pretty much all businesses need to have a daily field report of some description. We've got drawing logs here. So the drawing log will keep, and then you can have various disciplines that you want here. So the drawing log will keep all the drawings associated to a job. You can put a revision in here if you want. Um, you can export it out to um, another project, another uh, type of product if you wanted to do it. You can send it out to Excel if you wanted to keep it in there. You can create an RFI um, from here, from a drawing log. So something might have changed on a drawing and that might, might might invoke a request for information, which in turn could invoke a change request, which in turn could, could uh, create a change order, which in turn could create a variation. So you've got a full chain um, that you can go through from you know, the architect or the drawing house all the way back to the project. Other things that are in here as well, you've got a photo log on the job. Um, and you have submittals if you need to do submittals, which is more or less sampling of the project. So the most important things are in this module that uh, most people need. So that's the project management module. You also get compliance module. So compliance is all about anything that anyone needs to do on a project to make something happen. So that's a very general statement for it. But for example, insurance, for example. So you can set up your insurances in here so that all subcontractors have to submit a certificate of compliance by a certain date. You can do that by project or you can do that just generally. Um, you've got notices in here. Um, and by the way, like with insurance, if these dates, and I'm sorry, but the dates are old, but if these dates aren't upheld, it'll go and flag that subcontractor and it will say that we don't have a certificate of currency um, and therefore I can't pay them. So you will get um, a, dip, a, a flag of you know, a particular color in there. You can do notices in here, um, any sort of notices you want. Some of our consultants have all sorts of things that they've put in here all sorts of documents and all sorts of types. It's very flexible. Um, certificates. So these again, some of the things you can put in here, safety, hazardous, um, certificate of compliance type things um, and anything you want. So again, you can use it. You can use this uh, compliance module for all sorts of records if you want to do it. Okay, so basically, just going through that again. So when I buy the construction edition, I get all the basic modules in here. Um, I also get, I actually get manufacturing as well. I get the construction module, I get the project management module, um, and I get the compliance module. So that was pretty much a whirlwind trip of the product um, and what it does. So I might open it up to questions now. Awesome. Does anyone online have any questions? I've got one here for you, Greg. Can we cost labour to job to my jobs? Yes. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, depending on how you want to do it, you can do it from a site diary, um, or you could do it from a payroll app. But yeah, the answer is yeah. 
awesome. Um, can I customize this to my business needs? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> um, there's a whole lot of things you can customize. So um, from the time a user goes on, um, if I go to a user, I can uh, determine what modules they go into. I can determine what functions within those modules they go into. I can determine what approval levels they have, if anything. Um, so I might I might have uh, project people who I just give them, I come in the construction module and I just give them three things off this menu. So that's one place I can, I can customise it. Um, if I go into any of these screens and any of these things, and I might have showed you before, but let's just have another look. So in any of these grids, I can customise what that looks like. I can take out columns, I can add columns, I can do anything. Uh, with the dashboards, I can define what the dashboards look. With the reports, I can change the reports. Um, but yeah, it's very customisable, if that answers the question. Perfect. Um, another one, how long does it take to implement? Depending where you're coming from, depending if you're used to having a construction system like this, uh, probably uh, three months, something like that, to go from go to woe, move all the data over to train all the people, um, to, you know, to, to configure it the way you want to do it, um, to go live, something like that. Awesome. Are there any other questions from anybody online? Nope. Oh, one last one, Greg. How is it charged? How's it charged? Mm. Um, it's built by the month and it's built by, uh, there are different editions, but let's say it's the construction edition. So you've got um, about five different types of users. So it's by user type, um, by number per month. So there's full users, there's project users, there's finance users, um, there's external account users, et cetera, et cetera. So you work out, when we sell it, we normally give, um, you know, one, one or two licenses of each just to get people started. And then once they get it, once they get it all, you know, implemented uh, or ready to go live, then they work out the number of modules, the uh, number of licenses they need and away they go. Um, and that's just a, a monthly billing charge. That comes direct from MYB. Perfect, thanks, Greg. Um, and what integration options are available? Um, Michael has asked, does it integrate to Azure or AWS? I think it runs on AWS. Um, but I may be wrong, but it runs on it. It runs on one of those, one of those big ones. Um, I'm not sure whether you can self-host it. I don't think you can. All of that comes with it. So um, with the, the SaaS products, you get this product and you get it fully hosted and that's all included in your monthly, monthly fee. Perfect. Thanks, um, Greg. Well, I will just add one more thing. Yeah, go um, for it. If you talk about integration options, um, there's an area called um, the MYB Acumatica Marketplace. And in the marketplace, there are lots and lots and lots, and I'm talking 100 or more third party applications that work with this product um, in all sorts of area. So that's also. Um, if you can't find, you know, exactly what you want within the product, then there's a whole lot of tools there. You know, there's probably five AP automation products, for example. So it does integrate with a lot of things. Awesome. Thanks so much, Greg. If there's no other questions, um, I'll send the recording out to everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.